Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be learning how to airbrush for the complete beginner. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to graphicair.co.uk. If you check the description box down below you'll find a direct link to Graphicair's web store and you can go and check them out for yourselves. Okay, so we'll go over some of the products that we'll need today for the tutorial. So the most important things we need is our airbrush compressor which I'm using and is an Awata Powerjet light compressor and an airbrush and I'm using an Awata Eclipse CS airbrush. Also for this tutorial I'm using some A3 paper and the reason we're using some paper is just to spray some patterns onto the paper and get used to spraying paint out of the airbrush and learning how to be accurate with it. Also we need a painting pot. The painting pot is very important to spray residual paint from your airbrush once you've finished using a particular colour. Graphicair.co.uk sell these as well. Also airbrush cleaner is very important for our airbrush. After flushing it out with water any residual paint that's left over in the airbrush cup can be sprayed and cleaned out with this airbrush cleaner. I'll also be using two water sources. One's clean water and one's going to be for mixing and cleaning our paintbrush after we've mixed the paint in the pots. I've got some shot glasses at the moment, just plastic ones that you can get in big multiple packs from most uh, supermarkets. And the reason we're going to be using these is we're going to be mixing the paints outside of the airbrush now I find this for the absolute beginner is the easiest way to get used to thinning your paints but you can use your airbrush to uh, mix your paints but for now I find it best to use a shot glass to mix our paints just and pour them into the airbrush just to get used to mixing ratios. The paints we're using today are acrylic based paints. There's many different types of paints that you can use for airbrushing. You can actually purchase pre-thinned airbrush paints that go straight into your airbrush. These Games Workshop paints are not pre-thinned so we need to thin them down ready to be sprayed out of our airbrush. We'll be learning how to thin these paints down in this video. Okay guys, so that's pretty much all the products that we need to get airbrushing. What I'm going to do now guys is show you how to thin the paints down and we'll get ready to start airbrushing. Okay guys, so let's put some paint into one of these shot glasses. And as you can see the paint is quite thick at the moment as it holds onto the brush. And it's not dripping off at all there. So I'm just going to put some of that paint into the pot. Now I'm going to get some regular water as these are acrylic based paints and I'm going to start thinning. Roughly the consistency we're looking for is a creamy milky texture and as you can see as I put the paint on the side of the airbrush cup we want it to run freely down the airbrush sorry down the, the cup okay so now I'm going to clean my brush out and we have our paint mix all ready for the airbrush I'm going to turn my compressor on and we're also going to change the PSI and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Okay guys, now it's time to turn on our compressor. Okay, I want to work at about 20 PSI today to be spraying on this paper. The reason we change the pressure is that we want to make sure that the paint's going to be spraying correctly out of the airbrush. If the airbrush pressure is too low, the paint won't come correctly out of the airbrush. 
If the pressure is too high, the paint will be sprayed out at such a great pressure that it will reflect and splash off the paper. So I'm changing the pressure to 20 psi. So I pull up the cap and I change the dial and as you can see it's going down. Here it's gone down right to 1 psi which is not what I want to work at. But as I change the dial up and press down on the airbrush trigger I can accurately get it to 20 psi. Now it's time to pour the paint into our airbrush cup and start painting. Okay, so here I'm just pouring the paint that we've pre-thinned. And I'm just going to replace the trigger, uh, sorry, the lid of the airbrush. First of all, I'm going to spray some patterns onto the paper and just check to see how the paint is flowing out of the airbrush. As you can see, the paint's flowing out really nicely out of the airbrush. Now I'm going to spray some little dots into the squares marked on the grid. This is to check hand-to-eye coordination. It's also important to note guys that the airbrush I'm using is classed as a dual action gravity feed airbrush and the term dual action refers to the trigger mechanism so the first action would be to press down to release air and the second action would be to pull back on the trigger to release paint. And as you can see that's how the paint gets sprayed out of the airbrush. Now I'm going to try and follow the circle on the paper. This hopefully will ensure that we start to get used to moving the airbrush around an object source and help with accuracy. If I spray close to my object source and pull a little amount on the airbrush backwards, I'll get some nice, thin, smooth lines. If I pull further away from my object source, in this case the paper, and pull further back on the trigger, I'll get larger spray patterns like so. Now I've finished spraying with this particular colour, I need to clean out the residual paint from the airbrush cup. First of all, I'm going to add some water to the airbrush cup. And just remove the excess paint into the pot. Now I'm going to add a few drops of airbrush cleaner this is to help ensure that no debris or paint is left behind in the airbrush cup. Now we've cleaned our airbrush out, we can use another colour. I'm going to be using Games Workshop's Colour Door Sky, just a different colour, just for this test. Again, I'm just using my brush to get some paint out and place it into the pot. I'm going to add some paint and again we want that milky consistency. And as I show you, 
on the side of the jar we want it to run down if it's not running down very well we'll just add a little bit more water there we go now I'm going to place the blue into the airbrush cup make sure I replace the lid which I always advise if you're just beginning to airbrush it stops spillages from out the top of the airbrush cup as you angle the airbrush around okay and now we should be able to see that blue spray nice and smoothly out the airbrush and we're able to get really really fine lines out the airbrush after thoroughly cleaning out the airbrush I'm going to take the needle out to make sure that there's no residual paint on the needle and clean the needle I take off the back of the handle, I screw the chucking nut, I press down on the trigger and I pull out the needle from the back. The needle looks fairly clean but still I'm going to clean it for this purpose of the video. I'm just going to spray a little bit of the airbrush cleaner onto some paper towel and it's very important that you clean from the back of the needle towards the front to ensure that you don't damage the delicate tip of the needle. I place my thumb towards the tip of the needle as a guide and I place the needle back into the airbrush and I'll give it a little tap at the end to make sure that it's sitting right at the front of the airbrush. If you keep up with maintenance and cleaning of your airbrush, you shouldn't have to strip it down and take it completely apart. But in future videos, I'll be doing this and showing you how to clean an airbrush completely by taking it all apart. But following these helpful tips, you should be able to airbrush nice and effortlessly and easily by just using these simple cleaning methods okay guys so we've learned how to thin down the paint and spray it out of our airbrush and we've also learned how to clean it i want to say a huge thank you once again to graphicair.co.uk for sending me out the products for review if you check the description box down below You'll find that direct link to their web store and you can find out more about the Awata Eclipse CS Airbrush and the Awata Powerjet Light Compressor. In the next video in this series guys we're going to be learning how to paint a model tank for the absolute beginner and we'll be using Games Workshop paints for this as these are very familiar to scale model painters. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did hit the like button and thank you very much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.